Good morning, everyone. It's more success again. Uh, so we're talking about splitting fields. Um, today is a class that uh, didn't happen when LSU was closed for a severe weather back in February. So um, I'm going to prove the theorem that I promised yesterday. So let me remind you what a splitting field is. So we have a field, we have a polynomial, and an extension is a splitting field. So today we're going to see there's really only one splitting field uh, of the polynomial. If this polynomial splits, uh, so it has all the all the roots you could have in the in the bigger field, and the bigger field is obtained by at attaching all of these roots. So nothing extra. It's the smallest field or over which this polynomial splits, which is a hint. I mean, I, I called it the smallest field. So this is what I want to show. <clears throat> All right, so there's, um, there's two steps to what I'm going to do today. The first step is saying that um, here's uh, the, something else is unique. It's the field that you get when you attach just one root. So the splitting field is what you get when you attach all the roots. Um, but the intermediate step is, um, is this, the field you the field um f of alpha obtain by attaching a root alpha of f is unique of course every time i say unique um I, it's unique up to isomorphism, and that's what I'm, that's what I'm supposed to be proving. So let's, let me, so that's, I mean, if I don't see what unique means, I'm really not saying precisely what I mean here. So let me say precisely what I mean. Um, let F and E be two fields. Um, and, and there are two fields, but they're isomorphic. P For example, I mean, a, a useful situation to consider here is just let F, F and E be the same field. And then the isomorphism could be just the identity map. Um, or you could take, uh, well, there's a lot of examples that come out of this theorem, but you could take, say, the complex numbers and phi could be the identity or it could be the conjugation map. Um, we have an isomorphism. And say we have f of x, uh, v, and irreducible polynomial. Um, ooh, F is so it has coefficients in in big F. Let's say it's a one. It has coefficients a, a zero and one. Um, and let's say V of F is just so. How do you apply an iso this isomorphism to the polynomial? Just apply it to the coefficients. So any homomorphism of rings, you can extend to a polynomial ring, but just doing the homomorphism on the uh, on each coefficient. For example, how do you conjugate a complex polynomial? You conjugate every coefficient. Or how do you conjugate? How do you you know? Now homomorphism could be reduction modulo n. So if you have a polynomial, how do you reduce it modulo n? Uh, you reduce every coefficient modulo n. So that's what we're talking about here. 
Um, okay, so I have I have two fields and they're matched to each other somehow by an isomorphism. And I have a polynomials that correspond to each other as well. And what I, I'm supposed to do is attach a root of this polynomial. So, um, so we have that. Um, we we take a field f of alpha, where we attach some root alpha of f, and we attach a root beta of phi of f. <clears throat> so the claim, the theorem, so this is just all the setup. So we have two fields, a polynomial over each one, irreducible, um, with an isomorphism that matches a polynomial to the polynomial. And then I'm saying these two fields, these two bigger fields that I get, the extensions are also isomorphic. There exists a unique isomorphism. Um, from the two extensions. Um, and it's extending phi. So whenever I look at just constant polynomials in alpha, I, I, I'm just doing phi and sending alpha to beta. Um, <clears throat> so that's the theorem uh, that I'm able to prove. Let me show you how I really, I really kind of, we know how to do this because I did this on an example yesterday and the example, it's kind of everything you need. Um, so you have two fields, but now they're gonna be the same. Well, I guess one example. Um, because yesterday I did two examples. So you have two fields and, and then phi is the identity. So just every rational number gets mapped to itself. And the polynomial is x cubed minus two. So what we obtain is an isomorphism from attaching a, a cubic root of two to attaching another cubic root of two. And Yesterday, you should say we obtained yesterday we saw that what you're supposed to do is keep the coefficients and <clears throat> uh, and just send one cubic root of two to the other cubic root of two. So I guess if I keep the notation of, of the theorem, this is alpha, this is beta. So I'm sending every alpha, I see it to, uh, to a beta and every beta alpha squared to a beta squared. And this was an isomorphism. And this is exactly what's gonna happen in general. So uh, this is a bit simpler to understand than in general because phi is the identity. But yesterday I did a second example um, where they're, they're not the same. It's, it was this example. We have, now we have two different fields and they're isomorphic. Um, and then, and phi, well, <clears throat> I'm gonna call it C, C. Um, so the isomorphism I have between them is, is this one in, from the previous example. And I had a polynomial. Um, yesterday I had a polynomial x squared plus cubic root of two x plus cubic root of two squared via this isomorphism C. It goes to this other polynomial, just replace all cubic roots of two. Just all of those multiply them by omega. Remember, uh oh, I should say. Omega is a cubic root of one. Um, 
there's three of those, right, over the complex numbers. So just the one, one of one of the ones that is not one. Um, so we have, so now we have again all the ingredients. We have two fields which are isomorphic uh, by the previous example, and a polynomial, irreducible polynomials on both sides that are related by the isomorphism because cubic root of two goes to cubic root of two omega, cubic root of two squared goes to cubic root of two squared omega squared. So the theorem um, says that if you take an alpha, which is a root of this one, and a beta, which is a root of this one. Um, so now you have some new isomorphism extending extending this one, but it sends alpha to beta. So and now the C's are in F. Oh. Um, but what I was what was uh, what I was doing yesterday is that the coefficients could not stay the same anymore because they they live in different fields. Now on this side the coefficients are in f; they're real numbers. On this side the coefficients are in e; they're probably not real numbers. Um, so what I need to do to fix that is use the isomorphism I have on the coefficients. <clears throat> so that's an example. Uh, by really all the complication of the theorem is in the example. I mean, the, the, I think the main complication is understanding what the statement is saying because there's a lot of ingredients, there's two fields, there's an isomorphism, there's polynomials which have to be related, and then you get an isomorphism between the extensions. <clears throat> all right, so let's prove the theorem. So uh, let me tell you what the idea is. The idea is that, so um, what I have is F, an isomorphism with another field E, a polynomial and its image by phi. The idea is that whatever whatever root I'm attaching to F adjoin alpha, this is always isomorphic to, to the quotient of the polynomial ring, just the original construction we did. And so you have this isomorphism. And here it's the same. I'm attaching a root of this polynomial, but it's also um, isomorphic to a quotient of a polynomial ring. So, um, so we have our two fields of interest are isomorphic to two other things. And, and then if you use phi, you get an isomorphism between the polynomial rings. And what will happen is that it will induce an isomorphism in the quotient rings, or well, quotient fields in this case. So phi will tell us that these two are isomorphic, and then you follow this path uh, of bijections, you get, you get uh, the isomorphism we're looking for. <clears throat> All right, so um, so let's let's look at at this. I mean, they're both they're both the same. I mean, they're both just a field and an irreducible polynomial, right? Um, and I'm pretty sure I've already sort of proved this, but let me remind you. Uh, so if I wanna construct this isomorphism. What you do is you take the evaluation, the evaluation of, at alpha, where any polynomial gets sent to G of alpha. This is a ring homomorphism. 
uh, let's call it an EV for evaluation. And now we use the first isomorphism theorem. That tells us something about the quotients and the image and uh, oh, it's evaluation at alpha, sorry. You replace the excess by alphas. So uh, what we're doing is we, um, we send, <clears throat> we look for the kernel. The kernel, by definition, is the the set of polling, the set of stuff that goes to zero. So the polynomials that alpha is a root of. This, as we know very well, uh, there's a minimal element in this set. The stuff that has alpha as a root is the minimal polynomial. Polynomial. And every other element that has alpha as a root is a multiple of the minimal polynomial, which means that this set is the ideal generated by the minimal polynomial. Um, I mean, we know it, also we know it has to be an ideal because it's it's the kernel of a ring homomorphism, and those are always ideals. And the minimal polynomial has to be the one irreducible polynomial that. Um, that vanishes at alpha. So the kernel of the evaluation map is uh, the ideal generated by F. So the evaluation map induces an isomorphism by the first isomorphism theorem of the domain mod the kernel into the image. Um, So what's the image? Um, the image is, is the whole field. We, we've seen this already. Um, this is surjective. Because every, every element has a form G of alpha. <clears throat> I could even tell you that it's, um, that it's made of, um, I could even tell you, we get it from powers of alpha up to the up to the nth one, and not including it if if f has a degree n. I'm really just reviewing a theorem that I proved the other day. Um, right now, which is why I'm not going through every detail. Um, the theorem that says that every Algebraic extension here, this proposition. You have an any field extension with an algebraic element, and the the um, extension it generates is always isomorphic to the field mod uh, the minimal polynomial. <clears throat> so I'm skipping over the details a little bit uh, because we we know we know this from before. So the image is everything. And that gives me this isomorphism. And now, um, if you apply the same reasoning, to E and phi of f, you will have just just another another field, another root of a of an irreducible polynomial. You will have an isomorphism It's just exactly the same for a field that has a different name. <clears throat> All right, almost there. Um, so, We have um, that we when we attach alpha 
all we all we've done is is the same as just modding the polynomial ring by the minimal polynomial. When you attach beta, you're still only a, um, only attaching a root of a irreducible polynomial. So the same reasoning tells you it's the polynomial ring mod the minimal polynomial. So next step is um, we can use phi. to extend to an isomorphism from the polynomial ring to the polynomial ring. It just, so how do you send a polynomial to something? Just keep the coefficients. Um, sorry, keep the powers of x and apply the isomorphism to the coefficients. And, and this is, I mean, I'm not gonna prove it because that would be really boring. It would make for terrible content. Um, I'm not gonna prove that this is a homomorphism, but. Actually, I'm not gonna prove that it's an isomorphism. It has, I mean, the inverse is just given by applying phi inverse to the coefficients. And if you just figure out how you add polynomials and how phi commutes with addition, uh, that's all you need. And the same for multiplication. Uh, so, so now we have that. So now what we have is, is two rings with an isomorphism between them. And we wanna look at the quotients. So, um, so next step, I guess. And you have two ideals. Um, so let's say you have an isomorphism here at C. An ideal of R, then you have an isomorphism that I'm honestly, I should maybe call C bar maybe. So if the rings are the same, and you have an isomorphism, the quotients are gonna be the same. Uh, you just take an element and you send it to its image. Um, so, Apply this. Um, <clears throat> apply this isomorphism um, to R equals to F of X, S equals to E join X. Um, the isomorphism that we have and I equals the ideal that we're looking at. So what you have is that the quotient ring becomes isomorphic to the other ring mod, uh, not I, I, so. The image of the ideal, but the multiples of, of phi of the multiples of f are the multiples of phi f. So, um, so there you go. So this is the last isomorphism. All right. Um, so so that's pretty much the theorem. So so let me recap. Good.
because really, I mean, I went through some trouble to show that the that these are isomorphisms, but what we're doing, I mean, it's pretty clear what we're doing. Uh, this is this map and this map are the first isomorphism theorem. And so the first thing we, we did just look at some map from the polynomial ring, map by the kernel, and you get an isomorphism because there are surjections. Um, and this one are just um, well, let me just let, let me let's just look at what these these are. So if you have some some polynomial in here. some well, polynomial in alpha. These are what the elements look like. This is going to get sent. Well, this was given by the evaluation map. So this was the evaluation of a polynomial. So just replace x's by alphas. Um, this map was given by just do what you do on polynomials, which is apply phi to the coefficients. And lastly, the first isomorphism theorem was applied to the evaluation map. So here you are replacing x's by betas. So this is replace x by, no, sorry, replace alpha by x. The second step is replace. Um, a, so replace the constants by their image by phi. And the last step is evaluating. So replace um, beta by x. So I mean, so the formula in the end is exactly what I had in the example. Uh, apply phi to the coefficients and and replace one root by the other <clears throat> but i did the proof because because that, this shows now with not a lot of work really that it's an isomorphism of of fields uh so of course when you when you do the whole when you compose these three things you replace alpha by x and then x by beta what you do is you replace alpha by beta and a's by phi of a's. That is how you find this isomorphism. All right, so I'm not gonna do the uniqueness carefully. Just notice that we're, we're supposed to show the isomorphism this was called phi tilde. Is unique, um, provided that phi, when you just look at when when you just look at elements of the base field, you're just applying the the previous isomorphism that we had, and when you apply it to alpha, you get uh, you get beta. So the, the sketch of proof of this is just, it's just showing you a formula. Just by the fact that it's an isomorphism, um, that's a homomorphism. You're gonna have phi of the A's, times phi of the alphas and the powers of alpha are also going to come out of phi and now by the assumption I know how to compute uh, phi on all of these things phi tilde phi tilde on constants is just good old phi and phi tilde on alpha is just beta and and this gives me a formula. So if I have a formula that must be satisfied, then the, there's only one isomorphism. 
There you go. <clears throat> Maybe it would have been easier to prove uniqueness first. I mean, I knew what the formula had to be from the example. All right. Uh, so that was uh, the first part of the theorem, the, the complicated part. <clears throat> so here is, so that was uniqueness of the field you get adding just one root. Now, let's do uniqueness of splitting fields. So like before, say we have two fields. Um, it's uh, the setup is all the same. Um, an isomorph, we have two fields and an isomorphism and we have a polynomial. Now it doesn't have to be reducible. Um, <clears throat> uh, sorry, it doesn't have to be reducible. And we have that we can apply phi to the coefficients to get a polynomial over e of x. And what letters does it look use? K and L. Let K be a splitting field of F and L be a splitting field of uh, phi of f. So you have two polynomials, but now instead of attaching one root, you attach uh, all the roots. And, and the conclusion is the same. Except for the uniqueness. Oh, shit. Um, there exists, uh, there exists an isomorphism between the splitting fields. Um, and when you restrict to, to the, to the base field, you get the old isomorphism. So you could write this as saying that if I take if I take either path in here, I get the same answer. If I have it an element of A, I can see it as an element of K and apply phi tilde. Or I could just apply phi and see that as an element of L. And what I'm saying is that you get the same. And I'm not saying, I'm definitely not saying that it is unique anymore. Um, this could be very tricky, knowing how unique, how many options there are. This is a very interesting question. Okay, so the proof goes like this. Um, you take f and e, you attach a root to each other, to, to each of each of the polynomials, and you apply the previous theorem, and you get an isomorphism. And then you keep going. Um, so. So you attach a root of f. Attach a root beta of phi of f. Uh, and what you get is an isomorphism. And what you do next is you keep going. Um, so just like on Monday, when you when you have one of these proofs, when Monday was proving the splitting fields exist, I was saying attach a root and keep going. But the a nicer way to write it out is to do it by induction. So 
instead of saying keep going, I say by the induction hypothesis, I'm done. So um, we do this by induction on the degree of f, which is of course the, the, the degree of phi of f, since you're only changing the coefficients, the degree is going to be the same. Uh, if the degree, and if the degree is one, this is stupid because k is f and l is e. If, if the degree is one, then f must have a root. All polynomials of the degree one have a root. You have nothing extra to attach. The You didn't get a new field. Um, and there's an isomorphism, surely, and now I can tell you it's unique. Just make it, you're not extending anything. This is it, just, right. So, so now we do the, the important step, the induction step. So attach a root of an irreducible factor of f. So f is a product of irreducibles. And so I know I can attach a root of, um, <clears throat> what am I saying? <laughs> I, I know I can attach a root of any polynomial by just attaching a root of any other factors. The thing is the, the first thing I'm gonna prove today only uh, requires you to have an irreducible polynomial, basically because you need to make sure that you attach a root of the same factor on both sides. So that's what we're gonna do. So if you split F into irreducibles, these are also irreducible because an isomorphism preserves everything. So um, let alpha be a root of F1 and P of, um, sorry, and beta a root of P of F1, which would also make it a root of the bigger polynomial, of course. But it's not, I'm choosing it carefully because now I have, so now I have, uh, let me make it big. So I have an isomorphism and this is contained in F of alpha, which is contained in the splitting field. This is contained in E adjoint beta, which is contained in the splitting field. Um, alpha is a root of F1, which is reducible. And beta is a root of phi of F1. So what do I have here? What I have here is that I can apply the theorem from today. I attached a root of, of each of those. And what I get is uh, some isomorphism here and it makes that little square close uh, in that when I have something in F, applying phi is the same as applying phi tilde. So, so I've defined my isomorphism on some elements. Um, so now over F of alpha, F has a factor X minus alpha um, because he has the root and, and then he has another factor which I should call G. And if I apply phi tilde of F, well, alpha, so by a theorem, I have, I also have that alpha gets sent to beta, so this factor, the first factor x minus alpha goes to x minus beta. And here we have some other polynomial, g of x. <clears throat> and now I am, I am pretty much done because I'm just gonna do induction. Let's see. Um,
what am I doing? Did I just, no, oh, I just closed Django, of course. <clears throat> no, I, we're thinking. So now what I have are an isomorphism between fields um, and then these two are the splitting fields of f and phi of f or phi tilde when I apply it to something in the smaller field, um, it's the same. And the thing is, up to a factor of degree one, these are the same, these map to each, um, sorry, you remove a factor of degree one, you get the you get the Gs. And the thing is, oh, oh shit. All right, let me repeat that. So what I have, what, what did I obtain here? I started with my phi, but I, I showed applying the theorem that I could extend it to uh, to just an isomorphism when you added just one of the roots. So now I have a new, I have two new fields that are isomorphic. And here I have uh, splitting fields for the polynomial F. So these are obtained by attaching the roots of F. And this is obtained by attaching to E the roots of phi of F. So um, <clears throat> the thing is, the thing is attaching the roots of f. Actually, never mind the attaching. The roots of f, the set of roots of f, is the same as the roots of G and then alpha. Just look at the look at F. It has one factor that has root alpha and and the other factor. So the roots here are the roots of this and the roots of that. <clears throat> and the same thing goes on the other on the other field. The roots of phi of F are the roots of phi of G union the other extra root beta. So <clears throat> k is the splitting field of g. L is the splitting field of phi of g. Because being the splitting field means that you, you get a k by attaching all the roots of g. But I already have alpha in there, so it doesn't matter Splitting G is that making G split is the same thing as making F split because the difference is something that is already degree one. So now what I have is that the degree of G is smaller than the degree of F is one less. So apply induction because we have two fields which are isomorphic and they are the splitting fields of really just these polynomials. Um, so smaller degree than the degree of F. And the induction hypothesis is just a fancy way of saying I could keep going until I've pulled out all the factors and I'm just left with nothing. Or until I end up with a polynomial that splits and then I'm not doing anything. Oof. All right, well, that was... Uh, that was a mouthful today. Um, thank you for watching. See you later.